Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Father Lord. Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you and bless you again and again for another time in fellowship with the Father and with Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, as we cite the scriptures tonight, give us the knowledge that can only come from you. Give us understanding of the scriptures. Teach us tonight, Lord, precept upon precept, line upon line. Let iron, O oh God, sharpen iron. That in everything and every way, O oh God, we may realize you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I thank God that you are here. Uh, Choo Choo, are you still on the road? Because the traffic is terrible. Yes, I am. Okay. The traffic is, is you know, I mean, a little rain and Lagos becomes something else. Uh, this is a Bible study. Scripture is taken from Matthew, Matthew 11, 1 to 19. Matthew 11, 1 to 19. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples and he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you see, which you hear and see, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, I'm more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen another. There's not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. Who has hears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I liken this generation? It's like children sitting at the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute to you. We did not dance. We mourned to you. And we did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a wine biber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Praise the Lord. Let me start today with the Kbalibo loss. And the Kbalibo, are you, are you disposed? Yes, sir. The Kbalibo, why do we doubt? Well, I don't know if it's something that, uh, that the Kbalibo does, but anyway, why do believers doubt? 
Uh, well, to, to my own understanding, we, we doubt because we don't trust God enough to do the set, certain things that we expect or know of him. It's, it's a lot, it has to do with the fact that we don't trust God enough. And uh, perhaps that, that comes up from the place uh, not being very familiar with the ways of God. But let me understand, let me understand what you're saying. I'm asking you a number of questions. Number one, is it that we do not think that God can do what he says he can do? Well, I think in, a, in, in our minds, we are not very convinced about that. We believe that, uh, for example, sometimes from past experiences, uh, when we ask God for certain things, we don't get it. We begin to question, you know, what are uh, the next one we're going to ask him, whether he's going to respond. Yeah, it's valuable. You are not listening to my question. Huh? Listen to my question. You see that my question has no relationship to your answer. Is it that we don't believe that God is able to do what he says he can do? Yes, I, I, be, I think it's because we don't believe. We don't believe he can do the things we're asking him. Yes. We, we, don't, be, uh, we, don't, believe, we, we don't believe that God is God. Well, perhaps in our own personal experiences, we don't believe he will do the things that he says or is able to do or that which we ask him. And I think that is a simple truth because- There is a, um, difference, there is a difference from lack of inclination and lack of ability. You are, you are confusing the truth. Uh, there's a difference between not believing that God might not be inclined to do what we ask him or be inclined to do what he can do, which is different from God is unable to do what we ask him. My question is on the second. Do we believe that he is not able? Yeah, I think we believe he's not able. Because if we believe he is able, we won't have the doubt. No, we can still have the doubt. I can, I, 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 you, you can ask me for 10 Naira and I'm able to give you 10 Naira, but I just don't want to give you. I'm just not inclined to give you. Okay, Palibo, thank you. Let me go, let me, let me ask um, Sam Ukwa the same thing. Sam. Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My, my, my foundation question is, why do we doubt God? Why do we doubt him? Do we believe he is not God? Do we believe that he is not able to do what we want him to do or what he says he's going to do? No, I don't think it is that we don't believe. Uh, let me let me explain how it's how it's rolling around in my mind. Um, I think it is relational in the sense that, you know, um, if you are in, I, I think that we, we, we somehow in our relationship with God, we, we always go in and out of fellowship with him there are times we are on and times we are off and so on. And the truth of the matter is that when we are um, uh, um, okay. when we are in closer, okay, when we are on in closer communication with him, at that point in time, we believe anything is possible. We believe him for anything. We, we are so sure that he can do this and that. But times when we are out of fellowship, that's when we notice everything, every problem around us. You see, it's, it's like when Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out, walk on the water and meet you. And he says, okay, come. And Peter, he's in communication with Jesus Christ and 
He's focused on him. And then he starts going out to meet him in that fellowship. And then suddenly he's distracted by the, uh, um, uh, um, uh, the waves, you know. And for that split second, he's, he's lost that communication. And that now becomes more important to him. And then the problem weighs in and begins to overwhelm him. So uh, I see it as a situation where when we keep going in and out of fellowship, in the moments when we are out of fellowship, we can easily be overwhelmed with all the things happening around us. And even though we know that God can do anything and everything, and he has been doing for us before, in those moments, we tend to forget the things that he has done for us before that has that has uh, proven his track record. Okay, okay, and so I'm going to, so I'm, going to, so I'm, going to <clears throat> I, I, I'm going to take issue with you. We don't forget the things he has done for us. Let me let me pose the question in a different way. We don't forget. We know. The question is: You are basing your answer on a break in relationship. Is it that because of that break in relationship? We don't believe that he is going to do it for us because we have not been in relationship. It can't be because we forget. We, 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 we know what, what he's done. Okay, okay. yes, you are correct. You're, you are very correct. Maybe it's my choice of words. We, we don't forget because truly we, we, it is impossible to forget the things he has done. They are so indelible usually. I, I think what happens is that um, Perhaps we uh, should I say we lose sight of them, or we 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 or maybe there is that feeling of um, of guilt. I'm not that, worthy. Mm. So, sorry. Oh, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, not that, worthy. Yeah. Uh, that feeling of uh, this one that uh, he is going to uh, he's, is he really going to 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 have my time since it seems like I have not been taking him seriously too. And uh, it's like, I've not had his own time. You know, it's like somebody who only remembers you when he needs something and then gives you a call on the phone or visits you in the house, other than when he needs something, you don't hear from him. So uh, there is that feeling of maybe some kind of guilt. So that the problem is not with God now, it's with the person who is now thinking that, ah, now, wow, this one. And he can do this, I know, but man, I have been, you know, is he really going to take me seriously? Because we know that we have not, we don't seem to have been taking him seriously. Yeah, so I Sam, think that Sam. that could be one of Okay, but then Sam, I have, I have another question in relation to that. Are we right in that assessment that because we have not been close to him, he's not going to do it? Or the, it's not true that even though we have not been close to him, if we believe that he will do it, he will do it. That is correct. It, it is not true that he will, it is not true that he will refuse to do anything because we have not been in, in, in close contact with him. The truth is that regardless of who we are or what we do, it doesn't change who he is. He is who he is and he does what he does the way he does. And it is not dependent on our position that he does what he does. It, he just chooses to do or not do depending on his inclination at the time. And, so, and sometimes it could be for our own good. But so it's also, it, dependent, it, it, it depend, it's also dependent on our faith, on our belief that he will do it. Yes, yes, yes. Because at any point in time, he expects that we should believe and have faith that he will do it. The problem is when we now start having fears that um, maybe because of this and that, he might not, then that becomes a problem because it, 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 it messes up our faith. Okay, thank you, Sam. Lasha, good evening. Good evening, Church. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm very well, sir. Okay, thank look, you, I, I, have a, I have a strange question to ask you. Okay. Are you absolutely certain that God exists? Or do you sometimes wonder if he truly does? Mm, I know God exists 100%. Mm. 
but you know there is uh there are some situation in one's life like last week i was just with my younger sister so she was like sometimes she does she wonders if god truly exists like sometimes she will ask for things and before you know it god will do it and the next minute she will have to pray and pray and pray and pray and like i told her god exists 100 percent irrespective of the situation we have is god because sometimes when you talk fine there are sometimes we ask god for something that he does not do it not because we don't this uh not because he doesn't want to do it but there are sometimes we ask a miss we 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 ask for things that they are not necessarily the things that we need and god in his infinite mercy he knows what he's doing so okay, i so, know god so so, so, so Lashe, your position is this you are absolutely certain that god exists of course 100 percent sir okay then let me let me ask you another question but do you get the impression that sometimes he decides to hide from you hide from me yes I, yes what do you understand yeah. by that? Why does he do that if he exists? I mean, because, you know, this kind of thing can lead mm -hmm. one to believe that he doesn't exist because today he's close to you, he does all kinds of things. Tomorrow you call, 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 call. He's not answering yeah. the phone. Yeah. But majorly, the whole thing still uh, boils down to sin. Sin. If you are not in the right relationship with God at that time, you might not find him. You might not get him. So majorly, I think it. it the majorly, it is the it is sin that caused the maybe the little separation or God uh, no answering you at the time you want him to do it. And you, you, you think that the, the times when God hides from us is only because we sin? No. Not only because we sin. Another thing, my own, okay, maybe what I feel. Another thing is, what there are sometimes because you said if I ask him for something, I and he did not do it. There are sometimes we ask God for something, and not necessarily the things we need. So sometimes God just won't give you that exact thing that you want because He knows that this is not the thing you want. Yes, so but maybe there are sometimes you ask him for something that you need and that he knows that you need, but he yes. still doesn't give you or he delays in giving you. Uh, not, he doesn't God, uh, the, the scripture says God. he hides himself. Yeah. Why does God hide himself from us, from his children? I just feel those two things to my own uh, understanding. When you are asking, a miss and sin, those two things. No, I, I don't think I don't think it's it can it can be neither. Uh, okay. Sometimes okay. sometimes it is to stretch our faith. Okay. Okay. Sometimes we yeah. see if we will give up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of reasons that 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 could be involved. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Miss Yari Misala. Good evening. Evening, sir. Let me ask you a strange question as well. How can there be only one God? Have you ever thought of that? No, I don't have a problem with that. You have never wondered how there can only be one God? No, I don't. I, I, no. Uh, um, you have to speak up so we can hear you. I said, I've, I've never, it's, that has never been a problem for me. I didn't say it was a problem. Yeah, so I'm saying that it, it's very rational for me that there is only one God. Why is it rational for you? How did, is it that he got rid of the other gods? There were, there were no other gods ever. They were, they were. It was only him. So how did, how did only him you never wondered, you know, how was it that he was the only one? Before a God was, he was there. 
but the only one who was there. Well, in my own understanding is that there's certain things that you're not going to, it's trying to, you know, you're trying to explain um, um, the theory of relativity to a two-year-old. Well, maybe you have the other two-year-old that will understand what you're talking about. No, except that, you see, God talks about other gods. I know. What I'm saying is... The Bible says he's a god of gods. Mm. So but, how, do you well, understand, how do you understand that scripture? But he also calls us gods. So, no, but when he's talking about the god of gods, he's not talking about us. I know. But we're also called gods, aren't we? Yeah, so, but that, that is irrelevant to this discussion now. When he is talking about, when he says he's the God of God, he's not talking about us. He could, he could also be talking about demons. No? Did you hear me? I heard you. So I'm saying that, in effect, there are other gods. It's just that they are inferior to him. He says there are no other gods beside him. Didn't he say that? Yes, but there are other gods, small g's, and according to scripture. Gods. Yeah, no, I agree with you. But uh, um, what is their relevance, really? And, and what is their purpose? And what can, what, you know? Well, their relevance is that people worship them and they get certain things from them. They have all, they have certain powers, they make some people rich, they uh, get some people who establish in certain positions. So they are not, they are not irrelevant. Um, what I would say is all the other gods that I know, of the people that I know that have other gods. But the Bible says that those who follow after other gods, that their sorrows will be multiplied. Not that they're going to be rich or they're going, so yeah, they might have a few bucks in their pockets. They're driving a nice car. But if you look closely, their sorrows are in fact multiplied. And God is the only God I know that asks you to um, do the things that he asks you to do. So. Read the other questions you were asking. He can be walking down the road with you. And suddenly some people will gang up on you and beat you up. And he will let them do it. And all these uh, other small gods, I know that um, they, they guard their, their people in, you know, they, they give them what they want. They give them the, the desires of their heart. They indulge them. Um, they're not that complicated. But how does that recommend God to hear me see? Ah, well, it's an interesting question. I don't know if you can, in fact, recommend God. So, uh, uh, I mean, I have all kinds of problems with what other people have said, including uh you know sin is why you don't get what you want and it's just so simplistic you know we're just we're looking at the news and they, they, somebody just went and shot some kids off what do those kids do to anyone so um you know and, and god is everywhere so he knows that happened and and so um i believe that god himself discovers his people and he because he created us he knows how to evangelize us himself he, otherwise it doesn't make any sense uh, okay all right <laughs> thank you Jeremy. i'll come back to you you you're your uh, presentation is a bit deep, and uh, I'm not even sure whether I fully grasp the wisdom that is coming from you. Okay, um, what happened to Mr. Deleke? He has disappeared. Okay, he's here. Mr. Deleke, good evening. 
What do you mean, sir? Why did the same John the Baptist, who was the one who identified Christ, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Why did the same John the Baptist begin to doubt Christ? Or did he really doubt? Well, I, I, I believe that. Uh... I think I think that when I, in fact most of the time when I read that that particular side, it makes me to wonder to to wonder and look at John itself because what what he was showed what the the the, the revelation he got when he was baptizing when Jesus came when he was baptizing all those things that showed to him the way the way he answered he said he said he was told that that. Uh, anyone that is baptizing and there's a voice, there's a dove that come and says, this is, this is it. If it's, so, if it's his understanding is only based on that, it means that his understanding is still a little, a little bit limited. It's still limited in, in the information he had, he knows about Jesus, was very limited. It means that he doesn't, he doesn't really know Jesus to, in, in depth in, his in-depth knowledge about Jesus was not was not was not really things. You know, Dr. because Dr. Hold, hold, hold he, he gets somebody hold, one, one hold that. Doctor, hold, hold on a minute. He doesn't have to have an in-depth knowledge of God, of Jesus. Huh? Let me let me put it this way. Somebody, God tells John the Baptist, right, that this is how you will identify Jesus. Okay. You will see the Holy Spirit and it will descend upon him. So he saw exactly what God told him happen exactly. to his cousin. All right? And he knew, he said, this is the person. So he doesn't have to have any more knowledge than that to know that this is the person that God told him about. So why then, after some time, does he now come and ask the question that, are you really the person? He was already identified to you. Huh? Why did John the Baptist, who identified Jesus, told his disciples, I must decrease, he must increase. Must increase, yeah, you know, yeah, correct. You know, and who encouraged them to, to, to even leave him? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Why, why did he get to a point where he's not sure again about the identity of Jesus? I think, I, I think that uh, one of the reasons is that one is, I, I will look at it from a point of the limitation of man. When we look at the nature of man, the part of us that, uh, that is still uh, the, the part of us that, that is the nature of man that he has in him, the limitations that we have, when pain gets to a particular level, then there will be a cry. Then there will be, uh, there will be a doubt somehow. Somehow, just like when somebody was saying that when Jesus got to, to in Gethsemane, he said, my Lord, my Lord, why, did you, why have you forsaken me? He said, what led to that statement? For him to get to that, you, you understand. And somebody was trying to explain it and says that is it because of is it because he's still he's still he's still carrying this body, this body of flesh. So there's always man, man has limitations with, with, with the word of God and everything. At a particular point, sometimes we 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 used to derail and start want to look as if we are not we don't want to believe again. What we believe uh, is it not true? Is it you know, is it true? That's, that, that's the way I, I'm looking at it from. Maybe that's what that's the problem with John the Baptist at that, at that point. So, uh, so, so, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make the question a bit, a bit more specific and perhaps a little bit difficult, more difficult for you. So God told you, uh, he described this woman to you. This woman is going to come to see you on Monday at six o'clock. He will bring this letter. The letter on this will be written on the letter. The woman who does this is going to be your wife. And at that particular time, 
the woman did exactly what God said. Why would you later on now doubt if that is the woman that God has said is going to be your wife? Hmm. It's a very difficult question, Doctor. Well, ah, yeah, well, the, you, the, the, you, the, you, it's, it's only, let me, let me, let me, let me put it directly to you, Doctor. Would you doubt? <laughs> would you okay, question sir. that later on question that can this really be my wife? I will not I, I will not doubt the only thing is that at a particular point when something I might be what I might there might be a fear at the time when certain things that I wasn't thinking to happen start happening okay there might so, be so, fear so, so, might so, start so, coming in you know that just okay so what if what if you accept that this is my wife but then one day you had a quarrel with her, and she shouted on you. She abused you. She would say all kinds of things, even rubbish, nonsense. Wait. And then you wonder, wait a minute, is this supposed to be my wife? <laughs> well, well, no, my, to, to be frank, to be frank, all sorts of things. That's why sometimes when we look at God itself, you know, I don't know whether we create God certain way in our heart. Some, sometimes some people will say God doesn't like God doesn't do certain things. But we, we can we uh, we can still say that hundred percent because there are certain reasons why God allows uh, something happened, even if shakes our faith. But we still know that it's Him. It happens to us every time in our life, you know. But I, 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 it's very difficult for me to. But we, what we are supposed to do, just to accept it. That's just it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, okay. we, we are not All supposed right. to doubt. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, Missy. I was going to say that from experience. If God should come and if you God should send you tell you in specific terms that this one is going to come, she's going to be wearing a blue dress, red shoes. This is your wife coming at nine o'clock. The woman turns up like that. There's going to be an incredible amount of trouble that is going to come. Trouble, plenty trouble, trouble that will fill the whole house. So. Am I are you looking at me like that? <laughs> so what, is sometimes the, what, is, what is the point of the trouble? The, tro the point of the trouble is to tell you that it's not the person. No. What is the point of the trouble? The, the, the trouble, because the Bible says that the trouble is going to come uh, uh, to test your faith. Your faith. The Bible, the Bible says the, mm -hmm. the trouble will come because of the word. Yes, exactly. So, yes, so that's why I said that. So, <laughs> so when that thing comes in vivid colors, they tell you, "I am C. You're going to, you're going to be the president of the world, and it's God that told you. There's going to be then all of hell is going to be on your case. Yes, which, well, so which also for me, no, it's not so what because what will happen is that you are going to be so. And I think that something, some things that we do as Christians is that we underestimate our troubles as well. So, um, when that trouble comes, and 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 you, you know that trouble, so you can have a word. Then ten years of trouble, trouble every day. Somebody's coming, beating you. Somebody's coming, harassing you. Somebody because of that word. And I don't know anybody who's just gonna say, oh yeah, you know, it's fine. I'm not gonna doubt, I'm just going to, I don't know. Yeah, I can give you examples. So, you know, one example in scripture, God told Joseph, your father is gonna bow down to you. Your brothers are gonna bow down to you, all right? There is no evidence in scripture that Joseph ever doubted that that thing would come to pass. Okay. He didn't even try to protect that vision by, by keeping it to himself. But he broadcast it. Hold on. Hold on. He, 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 he broadcast it to everybody. They threw him down a well. They sent him to slavery. He ended up in, in Potiphar's house. 
he still believed. Mrs. Potiphar made advances at him. He rejected because he believed. How do you know that? Because he, because he said, why would I do this thing? I sin against God. That's how I know. Mm -hmm. He rejected mm -hmm. because of his faith in the God who appeared to him and makes him to understand visions. Okay. Can I say something? And then he ended up he ended up in jail. He still believed. Can I and, say something? Yeah, go on. No, the MC is Joseph, right? So I have a dream. God gives me a dream. He tells me this is going to happen. Then all kinds of things start to happen to me. It doesn't mean that I'm not. I don't believe in God, but if I end up in jail then I might, it might be that I got it wrong that I was going to become some kind of king and my brothers will come and bow before me, especially because I've been sold off. I've been in a well. Now I've been accused falsely and it feels like I can't catch a break. I'm a servant in my father's house. I was a prince. I got a special coat with colors on it. I don't believe that Joseph actually was in that place and was thinking, yeah, actually, one um, pair is going to send a ring down and they're going to dress me up. No, it wasn't that. I'm exactly. saying that. Look, I'm yes, saying sir. that. I'm saying that if he did not believe, you, you understand? Look, let, let, let's put it this way, okay? On so many different occasions, situations and circumstances would have forced Joseph to depart from God. Yes, he told me that I was going to be something that my brothers would bow down to me, et cetera, but now I'm down there in the well. Could have said, forget about it. This God is not going to do it again. So he told me, he gave me this vision, etc. And now I'm sold into slavery. He would have departed from God there. No. Yes. That's where, that's where I have a problem with what you're saying. So there's a difference between you saying, because this didn't happen, I'm going to depart from God. No. It means that you, you what you, like you say, is that you doubt and say, maybe I got it wrong. Not that God does not exist. So this is not about God. Or no, God. no, no, but, 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 but let's, ju let's juxtapose it with John the Baptist. Okay? If we juxtapose it with John the Baptist, they threw John the Baptist down a well. And the first thing he did was to ask, are you really the Messiah? Well, or shall we look for somebody else? He was already, according to that scripture, prepared that maybe another God is going to do it for me. No, we look, no. at, we look at, just hold on, we look at another example, okay, of Abraham. God says, I'm going to give you a child. Okay? And then the child is delayed. And his wife says, look, sleep with my house here. You understand? And that's why, you know, I mean, the, the concept of the father of faith in the end was the help of God because yeah. faith was not there at the beginning. It wasn't there. Look, Abraham went and told a lie. Okay? Because he had forgotten the prophecy. Now, we're, 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 we're having this discussion, not for theoretical purposes, because I'm going to apply it to us. How can we doubt God if we have experienced his works, how can we? You have, you know, I mean. Can I, can I answer that? Yes. Okay. First of all, I don't think that John the Baptist was doubting God because he said, shall we look for another? So this is a man who's been in the wilderness waiting for one person. So he's doubting that, okay, maybe this particular guy is the guy I was waiting for. Okay. Now, I don't even believe that we doubt God as much as we in my, from my own experience, I don't doubt God as much as I doubt myself. So I say, well, maybe I saw this wrong because <laughs> yeah, you know, hope deferred has yeah, but, been my but, but, but the person who showed so, you is God. So it is God you are still doubting. It doesn't matter. You can, no, you can, no, express, no, it. No, you can express it no, however I, you want. Yeah. God okay. still refer, re, 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 regards it as lack of faith in him. Okay. Without faith, right. it's impossible to, to, to please him. So yeah. by the time yeah. you have that doubt, you. you don't have faith in him. He's not going to say, 
No, it, it, the way you are expressing it, no. It's going to take it personally. I agree. But what I'm saying is, we don't couch it in the terms that you are saying. So it's not like, oh, God didn't do it. So yeah, this is, God doesn't exist. This is about, it's, it's a, hmm. I, I, you know what? No, 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 no. But, but, let, but let me tell you what happens. This is a classic. God didn't do it. You look for another God. Which God is that you are looking for? Precisely. But you know, but you, first of all, you look for another God. This is that is the that is the polemic of John the Baptist. Shall we look for another? He's going to that's, he's looking for another Messiah already. Okay. Yeah. And what happens is this: the woman wants a child. She is believing God for a child. She's been praying for a child, and it doesn't come. And somebody says, the Babalawo can do it for you. And she goes to the Babalawo. She has departed from the Lord. It's a classic. Huh? Somebody comes, you know, I mean, I, Mr. Vo told me that he was in charge of something, I've forgotten, whether like SCON or whatever he was working with, and they stole a major equipment that was in his care. You know, and it was his responsibility. And at a certain point, he told God, I am going to go to the Babalawo to find out who's going <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've he, never heard that one before. Yeah, yeah. Michelle Vogt. So, so he prayed. I said, he told God, he said, you know, God, he has been asking God, Jesus who did this? Listen? Who did this I am going to Babalawo. <laughs> God did, not, God did not say anything to him. So at a certain point, he told God that I'm going to, since you are not telling me this thing, I'm going to go to the Babalawo and I'm going to find out who did this thing. And God quickly revealed the person who did it. Now, it's, a, it's a strange story. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. God did not allow, because God knew that this one is going to go. This one that I even told me <laughs> that is going to go. So I'm saying that, contrary to what you're saying, I'm saying that in certain situations, we depart from him. Yeah. We look I, for another but option. I didn't argue that. I didn't argue you know, that. You say, we, you say we don't depart from him. You say we, we, we don't trust ourselves. It's not that we don't trust. No. We, I said you know, I'm speaking I, 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 for I, I, myself. I, 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 you know, we have a problem. Number one. I'm speaking his, for myself. His timetable is a problem. OK? He takes too long. He doesn't do it the way we want to do it. And somebody is telling you, you know, I, mean, I was looking for my brother. He disappeared. He disappeared for seven years. My auntie, Sister Taye, came to see me and said, you know, God is powerful, God is powerful. But he says, but you must mix it with social and so. And he says, look, <laughs> <laughs> that we should go and see some These people. These are very because, dodgy. <laughs> I don't know if you know the woman. We should, we should, it's sister, it's sister. We should go and mix it with some other people who can tell us where the so 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 and so was. You understand? You know, we are looking for another one already. It's the same, you know. And I'm going to ask later on how Jesus reacts when we operate in this way, because I'm surprised that he's an apologetic for John the Baptist. This is really what I want to, 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 to learn today. Mm -hmm. Why was he still impressed with John the Baptist? Mm, mm. Yeah. In spite of, you know, I mean, Jesus is just, he's, he's an incredible person. I mean, <laughs> beyond simple. But maybe the Bible he, says he's full of grace. He, 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 maybe, he, he, maybe he just knows that, you know, but that doesn't mean that we can now take it for granted that, okay, we can always do something and he will come back and help us. And, you know. Me, I know Dave for that one. No. Because <laughs> I don't even know, I don't know any Baba, I don't know any Mama. I don't know where the address is. Yes, I asked the question. Let me let me let me pose it to to uh, Mr. Wunga. Why why you know I mean, one dear Wunga, there are, yes, you know I, I've had so many of your testimonies. Yes. Okay. That is, you have not only heard of God by the hearing of the ear, you've actually yes. seen Him. You have yes. handled the Word of God. Okay. Yes. Why would you then? Of you know, now, 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 let me take it from you. Why would we, after that kind of experience, uh, that now doubt God because something happened? Uh, yeah. First of all, I think
impatience. You know, you know, you know what happens when one is caught up in a crisis. It happens to me, or it used to happen to me, such that if I was faced with a crisis, this helped me to think down and look and and even weigh the crisis. It's like that person that was on the twelfth floor, and they rushed and rushed and rushed. Your daughter is dying. Your daughter is dying, and everything. And he jumps from the third floor, top floor, and starts jumping down. Then he realizes as he's reaching level 10, he doesn't have a daughter. And then he realizes another one. He doesn't even know the person that was talking to him. So in a crisis like that, you know, if we are not internalized the word of God well, in a crisis, we tend to be blinded. We tend to be blinded by the situation. So we don't even give it a thinking. Or might be we're impatient. Apart from the fact that it's a crisis, we're impatient. We're, um, I remember the other day we were talking about long suffering and self-control. And I remembered I said, um, slow to speech, slow to anger, slow to wrath, but quick to listen. If we listen and are patient, they were able to digest the situation before taking a rash decision to go and meet a babalao or to go and do all that. So sometimes God, God is God is God is slow in our books. In our books, God is too slow. Is he really going to do something? Or is he going to let us die? So I'm not giving a I'm not giving an excuse for it, but I'm just saying. Sometimes that is what we are faced with. Let, 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 me, let me pose the question more directly to you. Okay. What is the relationship between the experience of God's power, that is, miracles, and faith? Okay. Do miracles, do miracles make us believe in God? Do miracles make us believe in God? I think what it is is that miracles um, aid our belief in God, but they're not the ones the one that help us to believe in God, make us believe in God. Because the fact that we have handled God, the handling itself has some substance to it. Like I said, if I'm in a situation and I say, oh, Jesus, friend on sin, I don't see him, but I have handled him. The miracles are the ones that I handled. Because the first time it happened and I sang that song and he appeared to me, that was a miracle. So other times I'm in such a situation or in a different situation, I bring back the, the, the song, Invisible God friend on sin. And then it, even if it doesn't happen as a miracle the second time, it helps me, it, it, it cools my mind. I, my mind becomes kulele. Because it, it gives I, I, me- I, I was just going to tell you that, you know, and I, there's not a prophecy that something is going to happen at a certain point and you will sing that song and not, you will not see God. That's, what I'm, saying. That's what I'm saying. It won't move. That's what I'm saying. It won't happen. But you know, because I've handled that song, I've handled God with that song. The song itself is that it gives me peace, even if I don't get a solution. And then what it happens is that by the time it happens this time, second time it doesn't happen, I now start getting a confirmation in my heart that what went wrong or what went God's way was the right thing. And God wanted it that way. But it doesn't stop me from singing that song. But, but let's, let's, let's look at examples from the scriptures. Okay. Jesus performed so many miracles mm. and they didn't believe in him. Mm. Then he went to see the Samaritans. He went to a Samaritan village after seeing the Samaritan woman and he didn't perform any miracles. Yes. And he said, you are the savior of the world. Yes. So, you know, I mean, um, 
the, the miracles he performed, he had did so many miracles in their sight, and yet John says they, st they still, or Matthew says, they still did not believe in him. Believe in him. Uh, so can we say miracles help faith? I don't think so. Mm, well, you know, miracles, I, I, I where don't did, remember where did the Pharisees don't believe in him. They saw all the things that he did. I don't remember this scripture, but that scripture says, by the, by, by, it says somehow that by something, something, it strengthens. I, I, I just lost the track of what I was going to say now. By, by, by the signs or something, um, it solidified or it, it was a rubber stamp. You know, that's, Abraham, you, that's, that's not in the scriptures. What you are saying oh, now no, is not, sorry, not in sorry, the Bible. <laughs> Abraham <laughs> believed in God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Yes. And God yeah. now substantiated his belief yes, it, it, yes. by giving him a miracle. Yes, that came after he had believed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that it, for me, it was after I had sang the song that the miracle came. And the miracle kind of also now rubber stamped. Yes, so, so, so your faith was not based on the miracles. I mean, signs are for unbelievers, not, you know, I mean, you know, tongues are for unbelievers, not for believers. Tongues, you know, I mean, uh, uh, they are a sign okay. for an unbeliever. What the believer okay. needs is the word. So, I mean, the, the, the relationship of the faith, you know, and, and I'm going to turn this upside down okay. because in the end, Jesus sent word to John the Baptist and he said, I've done this miracle, I've done this miracle, I've done this miracle, I must be the Messiah. Okay. So how do you understand that if, in fact, miracles do not sustain faith? Maybe I didn't get what you said. John the Baptist sent word, sent word to Jesus. Are you the Messiah or shall we look for another? Let me change my location. I'm losing you. Can you hear me now? Internet can, you, can, you, can you can you hear me now? Yes, I've changed my location. Can you hear me now? The issue is yes I can or no. Hear you now, sir. Okay, so John the Baptist sent word to Jesus. Are you the Messiah or should we look for another? Okay. And Jesus told them, okay, stay with me for a few days and performed a number of miracles. And he said, Tell him what you have seen. The okay. blind see, the lame walk. The dead are raised. Uh, so he pointed to miracles to validate the fact that he was a Messiah. Yeah. But what we are saying earlier on is that miracles don't validate our faith. Why did he use miracles to show up faith of John the Baptist? I think for for that for that um, circumstance, John the Baptist knew the scripture. And I think he knew the scripture as a prophet, he knew the scriptures. So I think for, for that circumstance, so it was not so it was not the it was not the miracles that Jesus was pointing to. It was the scriptures he was pointing to. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. He right. knew that he knew that the, the the scriptures about what the mayor would do. Had been had been uh, had been um, um, substantiated or had been accomplished by what Christ said He had done, so He knew the scriptures. So He, he. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, thank uh, you. Benedict Alibe. If you if you if you live faithfully you, with God, if you live faithfully with God for a number of years. And then you were arrested and thrown in jail, and God just left you there. <laughs> would you, would you start doubting what is, you know, what's God doing? Um, somehow the would doubt will come in. Would you shake your head? Somehow the doubt will come in because um, why would the doubt come in? Many, many are the 
afflictions of the righteous. As long as 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 um as a child of God, sometimes we hold this our uh, sense of belonging that um we should be protected from all kind of that will happen. Even though we know that the fellowship with him is about suffering. And then we are going to go into the suffering with him. When the suffering become um, something that looks as if in our eye, as if it's not going to end. Too much. Sir? When we think it's too much. When we think it's too much, that doubt will be setting in because you are in the flesh now, and um, something will be telling you that I beg you, just um, leave. But you don't want to give up. You don't want to give up. But something is trying to pull you out. Or you know that it's the true God. You know that God is seeing everything, and God is going to deliver you because He already given you the word. And you, at the same time, not just giving you the word, you know that so, the same thing has happened to some prophets before you. At the same time, God will see some prophets. You just believe that in your own case, you will not be like that prophet. When is that only that your own case, not be like that prophet? God is going to do something. That is when he doubts so that will be coming in from. Benedict, you might see. Uh, have, Kesa. You, have you had moments of great doubt in your life? Yeah. Uh, um, I would say yes. What happened? Um, I would like to say, uh, it's not that like I, 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 I expect that by now I should move beyond this starting level. And this is young guys, it's it, it, just, it just like a sap. And, and you see somebody behind you at the a certain situation. You know, what happened? Because as a, as a child of God, as a believer, you say that by this time, you're supposed to move on at this stage. And somebody behind you come past you and move to the next stage. And you are saying, you know, that doubt will come in, that question will come. Even though you know that God is working, the scripture to you believe the scripture, that certain doubt will come in at the point in time. I think that would have caught sometimes. Um, it looks as if you are tired of everything because you trusted him for so many things, and that which you are trusted trusting him for is not come, uh, come um, coming for the way you expected it. Some are just coming to my little because he has his own free time. He has you of great things. There is own something. But you wanted as well time this to move. Not because he cannot do it. You know he can do it. But your faith is shaking. Your faith, something you trigger your feet, you will look as if you're shaking. That way it doesn't come in. I think I have that moment. At the same time, I just know that this is only what I can do it. I can't go beyond it. Because I know I've got that. Uh, an example of, of what, what happened to me. Sir? Let me give an example of what happened to me. Yeah. You know, I was attacked by arm robbers and shot in the leg. And God, I mean, nothing is wrong with your leg. And so I automatically believed. Yes. That he's going to heal my leg. Now, and I believe because there were two things he said. He told me nothing's going to happen to you. And that was yes. because I was saved from that situation. But then he also told me nothing is wrong with your leg. So I, I felt he's going to heal my leg. But yes. then I listened to the voice of strangers. There were two strangers. Yes. And God brought great doubt to me. One, I gave a testimony about what happened to me in a church. And a nurse came to see me. And the nurse says, look, I've been a nurse for 30 something years. And let me tell you, this bullet that is in your leg is going to give you cancer. You understand? And that, that voice of stranger confused me. The second was the pastor of the church that I was going to. The pastor told me that that bullet is going to come out like this, neat. 
And even though it was, God didn't tell me that, I believe so when I didn't see the bullet coming out, I started doubting God. And so <laughs> there, there, there are so many voices that are contradicting the word of God. Yes, the word of yes. God. Okay, like like the example in the scripture now, I think the woman, the man that the, the 12 old girl that died, after when he just said to go to his the man's house, somebody from the from the crowd just said, don't bother him, the, the girl is dead already. He just has to counter the old issue. The same thing happened to us. You you are in the midst of um crisis and you've already told God, God has given you a comfort word. You will see some, even your brothers, your believer brothers will come and shake your face they're, a little. They're, they're the worst ones. They're the worst, they're the worst ones. You will come and shake your face. By that, by that they, come by that they beat you. By that they beat you. You will look as if you look as if you are you. And you will assume that because, because they are also believers, that they are, you know, it's like the old, it's like the old prophet. You don't trust God, you know, well, the old prophet no. and the young prophet. Yes. Yes, you know, I'm also a child of God. God says you should come and eat. Uh, somebody that is also that is an unbeliever, someone to come and tell you, um, this thing that you are seeing is attackful. Or somebody, one demon is wrong, is disturbing you. I know that this uh, call that God has already called you is a call of, of, of suffering. And you're managing yourself, and somebody else is coming to come and give you another message. Those yeah. one in low make you I say, Wow, well, am I are you really in the in the Please. business? God God gave yes, me a, a powerful revelation of Jonah. He took me underwater, and I was in an airport, and I saw a powerful woman of God came to see me. And he said, you know what is bothering you is mommy water spirit. He <laughs> 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 said, that is the spirit. We just have one water, you know, I didn't believe her. But I'm just saying that if one was not careful, people will oh. come and tell you all kinds of rubbish. They will dare you. They will dare you. At the end of the day, you will lose everything. Huh? The voice of a stranger can come from your from your mother, from, from your, your sister, from, parents, your mom. from from you know your, the man's enemy yeah. will be from his own household. Thank you. Uh, yes, hear me. Ma, I was just wondering about the bullet it's still in your leg, right? It's still there. Can you can you feel it? No. It's inside, inside. It's inside, inside. Um. <laughs> now is that in fact that you know it is sterilized that there is a natural sterilization all around it so it doesn't affect anything it's there i can't feel it but if i were you i'd be curious you never x-rayed it to see exactly where it is you're not curious no you, you can you, you you well you can still see this car i have a i have a a big car where the bullet went in, it's still on my, my foot, but you know, I can't see the bullet. But uh, if you take an X-ray of my you leg, around that vicinity. you will yeah. see the bullet standing there. Okay. I've done that. The bullet will just be there, just 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 standing there. Maybe when you get to heaven, they'll say, are you sure you have heard me, Arif Salah? Okay, let's see. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I will show them the bullet. <laughs> It'll be like 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 Jesus saying that. Take a look at my hand. Can you see the hole? Can you see the hair? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. If I live with the love. Is it Palibo still with us or is it uh, has gone AW? I'm, I'm here, sir. Okay, uh, if I live with, uh, uh, the son of God. Why do we? Uh, uh, why why do men find Jesus to be offensive? She said, "Blessed is that person who is not offended in me." We were talking about John the Baptist because John the Baptist has taken offense in effect. Uh, 
why is Jesus offensive, not just to men, but to us? I, I think it's because we have an expectation of him that his, his expressions do not necessarily meet. And so we pick offense with the fact that we expect that since he is who he says he is, then nothing should be difficult for him to do. And so why doesn't he oblige us, oblige men that which they believe he can, but often than not, his ways are not our ways. I think that is where we pick major offense. Okay, let, 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 me, let, me, let me see if I can, if, if you will agree with my illustration of what you are saying. So you have a brother and you need a hundred thousand naira. Your brother is a billionaire. He has a lot of money. And you ask him, please brother, can I have a hundred thousand? And he doesn't give you, or he keeps you waiting. Now you know that he can give you. You know that he has the money, but he hasn't given you. Huh? Don't you be offended? I will be offended because I mean, he has it. And that's the reason why I'm coming to him because I know that perhaps I've seen him give money out to other people who, as a matter of fact, do not have yeah, any kind are of not, are not related to him. <laughs> who, who are not related to you. And then me, that is your own blood, all right? Who I have a level of intimacy, some history with, that you expect that I don't even need to ask, only for me to ask, and then you don't even respond or you, you delay or, you know, of course I'll pick offense. I'll pick offense. Now apply it to God. Well, it's similar. I mean, because you know God can do it. You oh, know he's the one with God. Does God offend you? <laughs> well, in 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 set, well, to be honest, I've, I've picked offense with him several times because I believe that. He has told me to ask. He has, he has drawn me to himself. And then when I make certain expressions or requests, um, they are not met. And so I'm beginning to rationalize in my head, why, was, why didn't he answer? Because I know he can answer. Uh, and then it doesn't make sense to me. And like that to your friend or uh, who was saying that, ah, if God does not answer, who we'll stole this thing? Me, I will go to Babalawo to, to ask. <laughs> but even, even though when those thoughts come to your mind, you just realize that, listen, I, I might not get to that point, but I will, feel, I will feel sad. I will feel down. And if that is uh, uh, tantamount to being offended, well, it is, then that is where one will feel. Because you know you can do it, but why is he not doing it? And then he's not even explaining why he's not even doing it or delaying it. That, that whole thing just, you know, it makes you feel bad. It does. That's my, that's my honest truth. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, yeah, Missy. <laughs> Look, I, I still think we're being polite here. You know. I've been polite. You know, you know, you know, you know that sometimes God will not even allow you to go to your brother. If you go to your brother, he will tell your brother to refuse to give you that money. Okay, fine, right? So God, you, you are the one that went and you spoiled this matter. You did not allow the person to give me money. You stopped them from. Now, okay, I'm asking you directly, you directly, do this thing for me. I say, ah, no, go come, yeah? You're gonna be offended. I have an offense room. Let me tell you, in case nobody, everybody here is, you know, they're all very Christian. But you say, blessed is that person who is <laughs> <laughs> offended. Ah, uh, right? You're going to, you're, you will be offended because you, you, and I think that there is a setup there because you get to that day where you, God will send you to somebody and that person he sent you to is going to insult you. They will insult your hair, they will insult your shoes, they will pour water on you, they will 
they will finish you. Now you're going to have to accept that he sent you into that place. You know, like Isaiah, they didn't listen to you. Then they insulted you. Then they threw you out. Then they rubbished you, right? And that was the assignment. So you're not going to be offended. People are better Christians than me here. <laughs> yeah. No, but but you know, but maybe maybe they, they have learned from the scriptures that that is what he does, and they don't want to be offended. Oh, okay, well, that's that's why I said you know better Christians than me. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Chuchu, are you home now, or are you still in traffic? Can you hear me? I can um, on my way up. Okay, okay, all right. I'll still give you some time. All right. Um, ha, I was just about to call um, Samukwa and he disappeared. All right, Mr. Deleke. You know, I like Eugene Peterson's translation of the scripture that we read. Yeah. You know, Jesus was asking, he said, who did you go to the wilderness to see? And Jim Peterson said, did you go to see a sheikh in silk pajamas? Now, the question I have is this. And he says, those who wear those kinds of things are in king's houses. Hmm. Does it mean that Jesus is against us wearing fashionable clothes? Well, it's not, uh, I think that he it it, it, it doesn't want us to to be to be socialized with the world because there's a language there's a there, there's a, a, a language of the world there's a way they dress there's certain about them they have to show up you know they have to everything you have people must know who you have must know the, because somebody was telling me today that to know a wife of a rich man you when you see the, the wife you will know that this one is a wife of a rich man so why i said he said, because what she's going to put on, she's going to put on, is already showing that, yes, you know that, ah, this one, you know, this, the kind of honesty she will be speaking, the kind of car she drive, the kind of shoe she wear is, you will know that this one is from us, from one, one big, you know. So Jesus doesn't want us to be like that. He doesn't want us to be like that. So we, we, we are, our own supposed to be everything we, we do must be moderate. Must be moderate with moderacy. That's what it, we, we are we are required to do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Now, Benedict, what is, so, what is so impressive about the faith of John the Baptist? Why was Jesus so lavish in praising him, in spite of him saying, "Are you the Messiah? Should we look for someone else?" Jesus, Jesus is um, um in that in that position is um how will I put it? You know that um, John the Baptist is is somehow losing faith and is someone who almost all do just respect because um is is the one who baptized everyone apart from the fact who injected him and if you say a great man of faith. Like that, losing faith. You are not going to turn it down like that. You are still going to say, "I'll find a way to encourage him," because the man who who by that the Messiah, who all the all the people in Israel, Jews, went to meet him for battle so that they can the ministry of Jesus can can start it. Suddenly, the matter that in the Messiah, the Messiah that he himself confirmed. You know, as Jesus that the man has gone, has gone through <laughs> have levels to suffering. And the only way to help that kind of person, not to downplay the person, is to just encourage him. That is what it is. You, you have to embrace suffering of God. So let me let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. So should I conclude from what you are telling us that yeah. in those moments when we are down. When we doubt, we can expect Jesus to encourage us. Yes, yes, yes. He does that a lot. That's when you you'll be in, in a place 
you just someone who just threw a word of God to you, and you look at the word of God, the word of God is, is just directed to you. I don't say be still and see the salvation of God. Some will say God is only a savior, or you will say one big sandboard from nowhere. We just say something that connects with God to you. You know that God is speaking to you at that moment. Or someone from nowhere will just come and tell you that you are blessed. If you is someone who, who belongs to the kingdom, who understands the word of God, you should know that God is encouraging you. Thank you. Yes, doctor. Yes, sir. This also, also tells us how compassionate Jesus is. Because he was looking at uh, uh, John the Baptist, a man in pain, a man that was going through that, you know, he, 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 there's a request for, for, for a savior. That's why he is looking out for a savior and Jesus understands. So, so because Jesus is a compassionate man, somebody that, you know, he has to have compassion on him, you know, so give him a word of peace. In fact, the question John, John the Baptist asked, the answer was, the answer was peace. When by the time they brought they brought the, the answer back to him, he, he calmed down. You know, he has, he just moved on with it, with with, with it, the way it is. So I, and I believe that that the same thing happened that happens to us. A lot of the time we are agitated. A lot of time when we are expecting something from God, because we are always having our own time, we we will we will we will set our time when God promised us something or He has shown us something that's going to do. We will we, we, before you know we already fix a time. We are forgotten that the person that promised us is the one that knows the best time, you know. But we are we, we will just be in a haze. Sometimes we, we won't be able, we won't be patient, you know. And God knows; He knows our capacity. He know what the He know where we will get to. That's why I believe that prayer that I said that man was telling God that ah, I will go to Babala. I believe you because God knows the capacity of the man knows he, uh, he knows his limit. Ah, this guy is getting to it. So, immediately, so I believe that God also, also a lot of the time, also send us a word of peace in that in those moments, because I believe that I will not allow a, uh, his child to go astray. You know that's what I always believe. And in those moments, it will also help us too, to also help our faith, because when He give us a word, there must be a trial. The word must be tried to know whether do we believe the word. It means that when you believe the word, you believe to the end. You know, to the end. When Abraham was, when God promised Abraham his son, he got to a level that the past, there's nothing, what is monopause? This one is over, over you past the age of whatever. You know, so it's, it's, that's why he was uh, accounted for him as father of faith, you know. So I believe that God is always there with us to help us. But, but, but how, how do you know that Jesus is the Messiah? Hmm. I know because he is a Messiah because he is also a deliverer because he has delivered me in so many so many ways. He delivers me from sickness. I'm sick. He has healed me. You know, so he has delivered me from debt. Went into one big debt that huh, I don't know. I was just crying, crying, calling unto him. In fact, it was, this was just like an example of what we are talking about. When I fall into that debt. It took me like almost a month. I was calling God every day, every day, first week, second week, third week. Look and see if he's not going to answer. But what other option do I have? I don't have any. I just have to gloss, you know. But he showed up. He showed up. The way he right up the dead, it was, ah, man. If I see anybody that holds depth, I'll, I'll, I'll just open my mouth and start. God is, is, can deliver you from this depth too because he has delivered me before. You know, so uh, I believe, uh, me, I believe 100%. Too. Hmm. So don't thank, thank God. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, me see. Jesus said the, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. This is a very, this is a very uh, difficult scripture. Do you, do you understand what, what it means? It's not difficult, though. It's not difficult. What Mr. Deleke just said, you have to you have to be violent in prayer. 
And I also, I think, you know, there's just certain things you will not understand until you have a need for violence. So if you, if you get to that point where you, are, you have a debt and you can't pay it, you're gonna get very, very violent in prayer. You're gonna be praying. I mean, those kinds of prayers you can't pray in church because- uh, you Are you talking about now? Ah. The kind that your eyes will be watering, your head will be shaking, those kinds of prayers. So that, <laughs> you know, um, so, so, uh, I, uh, so who are they taking him? Are they taking him by force from God? Is he God? You know, I mean, said your father, it is the good pleasure of the Lord to give you the kingdom. Who are they taking him? Yeah, he's giving you, give you the kingdom. And all these other dudes will come after you. Then you're going to have to fight them. <laughs> it's very annoying. You, you're going to have to fight them. And, and you, you will, he will wake you up at 12 o'clock and say, oh yeah, fight. You'll be like, I just want to sleep. <laughs> so, ah, now what? Who is least in the kingdom of God? Are you asking me? Yes, Jesus yes, says there is no man born of woman that is not greater than, than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God. Who is least in the kingdom of God? It's an interesting question. I have an idea. I have no idea. Well, I don't know. Does anybody have an idea of who is least in the kingdom of God? I'm going to make a suggestion. Who are the people that are least in the kingdom of God? Benedict. Yes. Born again. People who are just, born again. You know, they, they just met Christ. They just preach Christ to you. People who are your, That they just preach Christ to you. You just convert. You convert. No, no, stop this. Hey. Okay. You can't, you can't use that kind of criteria. Yes, the valuable lesson. Well, I, I think the least ones in the kingdom of God are those who never had the privilege of opportunity of uh, uh, Jesus' words or Jesus'. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Because those are the ones that John the Baptist is greater than. Those people who uh, never had an opportunity to listen to Jesus are not in the kingdom of God. Okay. Let me make a suggestion. The people who are least in the kingdom of God are the pastors and the bishops and the popes. They are the least. They are the bottom, you know? Prostitutes, tax collectors, all kinds of riffraff, we get, we enter the kingdom before them. I've written about this before and people say, okay, at least, at least they will enter, sir. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> they might. They might enter a shop, but they, they will be in the bus quarters. Huh? We will not be in the bus quarters. If Bible also pray for us, let us close this meeting. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. By your grace, O oh Lord, we will not be in the boys' quarter. Amen. We seated with you on the right hand, Lord, or at your right hand. And Father, please, Lord God Almighty, forgive us for our ignorance, forever doubting who you are and what you are able to do. Please, we ask for your forgiveness and we ask for your special grace to never doubt you. We ask you for the capacity to be able to hold on when your word unto us is being tested, when our faith is being tested. Help us to take our anchor in you and have the strength to endure even unto the end. And Lord God Almighty, we ask you for wisdom. We ask you for guidance. We ask you for a heart that we obey you without reservation. And Lord God Almighty, may the rest of our days upon this earth, O oh Lord, in this age, be filled, O oh Lord, with your presence, with your direction, with your goodness, and with your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, let me, let me, let me say something, Palibu. Just listen to you pray. Do you know that every prayer you pray is taught somewhere in heaven? No prayer that you pray is ever lost. Every single prayer 
it is like it is like a library where your prayers are stored. That's why it is good to pray. Okay, it is good to pray. God, according to the scripture, puts our prayer in His bottle and bottles them up. Say to the righteous, "You are the apple of God's eye." You are the apple of God's eyes. You are the apple of God's eyes. Good night, Choo -choo. everyone. Choo -choo. Answer my WhatsApp message. Choo -choo. Salibo. Hey, Benesco. One day, let me sleep. You don't forget now. Where is Tamara?